Yes for Reading, our town and schools. Vote yes on October 18th. Why does Reading need an override? Hello, my name is Barry Berman, and I'm on the Reading Board of Selectmen. A lot of people have come up and asked me, what's this whole thing about Proposition 2 and a half, and why do we need an override? So I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to describe the history of this and how we came to where we are today. In 1980, the voters passed what was known as Proposition 2 and a half. And it basically said that cities and towns could only raise the amount on their property taxes 2.5% a year. They were limited by a 2.5% increase. However, there was no such mandate to, uh, to limit costs. So at a certain point, while your income can only go up 2.5% a year, costs are going up more than that. So at a certain point, you have a built-in structural deficit in your budget. So if you want to maintain the same level of services, the question is not if you're going to need a Proposition 2.5 override, it's when you will need a Proposition 2.5 override. The last time the voters were asked to do this was in 2003. So that was 15 years ago. Um, and in that time, they granted uh, an override, which allowed the, cities, uh, the, the town of Reading to continue to do the services that we do. We're now at the point, without significant new, new uh, revenue, we are not going to be able to deliver the same amount of services that we've done in the past. Um, why has it been 15 years? Well, one of the things that I would argue is that your town of Reading is very well run. Um, we've really, really managed our costs, things on health care. We've consolidated services within departments. We've consolidated services uh, working with other towns. We've really, really watched our spending. So we're really able to kind of keep the level of services um, at the level that they are without um, significant increases in revenue. We're now at the point where that's no longer possible. One thing that people don't realize, um, the town is so well run that Wall Street has designated uh, Reading as a AAA bond rating, which basically means, it's just like when you go to refinance your house, the better credit you have, the better rate you're gonna have, and it saves the town thousands and thousands of dollars a year on interest. We've really done a good job in keeping our costs down. But we're now at the point where we can no longer do that. Um, so over the summer, the selectmen along with the school committee uh, and the library trustees held a series of meetings um, throughout the town to ask people, what do they like about their services? What are they willing, uh, what, are they, what do they like? What, what are they willing to do without? And we used that information basically to come up with this Proposition 2 and a half override proposal. The takeaway from a lot of those meetings was that people really do like the level of services that they're getting in town, um, and that very few people could come up with services that, that they were willing to do without. So people like what they're getting, um, and they like um, how they're being delivered. So we're at the point now where how are we going to pay for that? So the proposal that's before the voters on October 18th, this coming Tuesday, is basically to allow the town to raise an additional $7.5 million um, in revenue. And that revenue is going to hopefully last us to the, uh, another significant amount of time. It's going, to, it's going to cure the structural deficit that I mentioned earlier. It will enable us to put back some services um, that were cut, and also to put in some new services that people in town in the listening sessions thought were really good ideas. Um, the reason why the, the amount is $7.5 million is because we designed it so that it lasts at least through fiscal year 25. At that point, the debt that we're paying on our property taxes for the high school and the library will fall off. And that will enable us, so, so people's tax bills would actually go down. So we're hoping to have this override last to at least that period of time um, before we have to come back and ask the taxpayers for more. We're hopeful that it will last beyond that, and the town has a history of having um, of, of really watching our, uh, watching our spending so that um, it may be longer before we have to come back. But we're at the point right now where if we don't have significant new revenue, um, we are not going to deliver the, type, the level of, and the depth of services that we have. And I know a lot of people have come up to me as a selectman and they say that you know, it's, it, it's a lot of money, people living on fixed incomes, it's hard to afford. Um, and, and so the selectmen went to town meeting and asked for some tax relief for seniors who are low and moderate income. And I'm actually proud to say that Reading has become the third town in the Commonwealth that actually will allow, if it, if it uh, passes the legislature, 
for us to actually um, give tax relief to low and moderate income seniors who've lived in Reading for more than 10 years. And the idea there was for the people who came to this town and helped build the town to, to where it is, um, they will get some tax relief. We'll be, we'll be joining only two other towns in the Commonwealth. So we're trying to mitigate the impact on those with, who have the least likely ability to pay. Um, so what's going to happen? Um, if the override does not pass, we will balance the budget in fiscal year 18. However, the services that we're going to be able to provide are going to be significantly cut or significantly reduced. Um, in past uh, budget constraints, we were able to spare public safety. That is no longer going to be possible. So if the override does not pass, um, we're going to have cuts in public safety, public works, the library, um, and the school department is going to have devastating cuts, and I think they'll, you'll hear more about that later. If the override passes, it enables us to live another day um, and keep the service level the same. That's what we heard when we went out and listened to the community. People like the level of services that they have. However, we are required to balance the budget with the amount of funds that the town gives us, and we will do that. So the choice before the voters, before you, um, on Tuesday is, are you satisfied with the level of services? Are you satisfied with the way your town is run? And do you want to keep the town moving in the direction that we are? If you are, you will vote yes. If you're dissatisfied with the level of services or you're willing to do without, you'll vote no. But the thing that I encourage you all to do is go out and vote. Um, we want the highest turnout that we can possibly have on this. Um, the future of the town really is riding uh, in this decision, and we will live with the results of that. If it passes, you know, we'll have additional, we'll be able to have the additional revenue to keep services moving in the same direction. If it doesn't, there will be cuts. Um, we don't know what those cuts will be. It'll be part of the budget process. But the most important thing, I urge you again, is to go vote on Tuesday. Thanks very much. Hi, I'm Jean Borowski, and I'm the current chair of the Reading School Committee. At our meeting on September 26, 2016, the school committee voted unanimously to support the $7.5 million Proposition 2.5 override to support our town and our schools. For more than a year, elected and appointed leaders in Reading have worked to explain the nature of the town's structural budget gap. Put simply, our annual expenses are rising and are projected to continue to rise at a faster rate than our revenues. Many of these expenses, like health insurance premiums for our employees, are beyond our control. For the past several years, both the town and school departments have done an excellent job living within our means, even when that required cutting from a level service budget. As a school committee member for the past three years, I have overseen this process as we've pared back budgets, cut expenses and programs, and found ways to consolidate and share positions. Through it all, we have kept our class sizes manageable, invested in necessary improvements, maintained robust course offerings, and kept our technology infrastructure sound. We understand that living within our means is a voter mandate. We must pass a balanced budget, and when revenues aren't keeping up with expenses, we understand we have an obligation to cut the budget. Over the past several years, the school committee has cut well over one and a half million dollars from a level service budget. We have embraced the challenge of doing that while maintaining the high level of education the voters of Reading demand. However, Current financial projections indicate that we will be forced to cut an additional $2 million from the school budget beginning in fiscal year 2018, which begins this coming July 1st. Our community will no longer be funding education at the level the resi residents of Reading have come to expect. Because the school budget is comprised overwhelmingly of salaries, the bulk of these cuts, $1.7 million, will have to come from salaries. The average teacher salary in Reading is $55,000, so the math is simple. Without additional revenue, we will have to cut approximately 30 full-time equivalent positions from our schools. That is roughly 5% of our staff. There is no way to make budget cuts of this scope without impacting students. Class sizes will rise, meaning students will get less individual attention. Electives will be cut meaning our students will be less competitive applicants when they apply to college. Reduced investment in technology in our classrooms will force teachers to rework lessons in ways that are less engaging for students. If this override does not pass, we will have fewer teachers working under more challenging conditions. I am concerned we will see increased staff attrition. 
This, I am afraid, will lead to a deterioration of the culture of each of our schools and in the overall educational experience of Reading students. A no vote will undoubtedly save us all money every year, but it comes with a significant non-financial cost. It will lead to reduced educational opportunities in our schools. And that's a price our kids will have to pay. I applaud the Board of Selectmen for putting this ballot question before voters because this really is a moment when the community must come together and decide if we are able and willing to afford the extra money it will cost to continue to provide our current level of public services and education. If the override passes, we will have a financially and educationally stable future for the next decade. The Board of Selectmen have approved an override that they anticipate will allow for reasonable budget growth and solve the budget gap for the next eight to 10 years. The school department will not have to endure significant budget and staff cuts. We will be able to continue to provide the same level of education our students currently enjoy. A yes vote will also allow the school department to make some modest investments in our schools, including the ability to put comprehensive health education back into the middle school curriculum the addition of two full-time teaching positions to the high school, which will increase elective offerings and reduce class sizes. We will be able to provide additional supports for our students who are struggling, and we will be able to provide increased oversight and coordination of our programs, services, and curriculum, ensuring a better education for all Reading students. I do not take advocating for increased taxes lightly. I understand the significant financial sacrifice I'm asking each and every Reading resident to make, but without this financial sacrifice in the short term, I believe we will all pay a higher price in the long term due to flat or declining home values. I strongly encourage all Reading voters to seek out additional information about this important ballot question on the Town of Reading website, that's www.readingma.gov, and the Reading Public School District website, that's www.reading.k12.ma.us. Please thoughtfully consider the impact of your vote and make an informed decision on October 18th. How will the override funds be allocated? Um, the $7.5 million override has effectively, I'll say these pieces, uh, $5 million is for the schools. $2 million is for the current structural deficit, as Dr. Doherty described. Um, $1 million is for added back services or new things. And $2 million is for a future expected structural budget deficit. It is not needed in the first year, but you saw that over eight years, more than $2 million is going to be needed, so $2 million is kind of an average figure. And cut all those numbers in half and you get the town side. So just to be clear, the $7.5 million is $5 million on one side, $2.5 million on the other, roughly the two to one ratio that we uh, talk about. Um, the first piece which Bob talked to is the structural deficit. That is the, the $2 million. That is really what it will take to fund the uh, budget in FY18. Uh, essentially, it's taking all of the staffing and services that we have currently in FY17 and moving them forward with um, normal contractual increases, in, not for just staffing, but for other areas as well, including special education, bus transportation, things like that. The other areas are uh, address the challenges that I just referred to, including salary adjustments, um, creating supervisory leadership to help support our staff, uh, additional uh, support for our struggling students. Um, this is actually proactive in a way that in the long run it saves costs. Students that are struggling early on, if they do not get the attention that they need, um, usually end up um, on an IEP in special education which has a greater cost to it. Um, and right now, those are, we don't have a lot of those services in our, in our district. Um, we also, as one of the items, special education leadership, again, to help support um, the growing and development of our special education programs, putting middle school health back into um, the middle schools. Uh, unfortunately, this was reduced a couple of years ago out of the budget as part of some budget reductions. Um, putting back into place the two teachers that were, uh, two of the teachers that were reduced in the high school budget this year um, as a result of the budget cuts from FY17. Um, and those are the areas that, that would total the amount of, of $2.96 million, which is the, the school department portion of the budget if the override 
um, passes. Thoughts from Reading residents. Hi, I'm David Corey from uh, Brown Street. Uh, I've been a resident of Reading for about 15 years. And one thing that I have said, uh, and this is more of a comment than a question. Um, one thing that I have said the entire time that we've lived here, and it feels silly to say about your town, but I, I have always felt like Reading is a good value. <clears throat> when I talk to other people that I know that live in other communities, what we pay for taxes versus what we get, I've always felt has been a good value. And when I hear numbers like, you know, we're in the bottom half of what we pay our teachers, um, when I hear things like we are paying, you know, below the, the curve on taxes, uh, when I hear things like we're, we're already um, below the the escalation rate on health insurance, which is a, a huge cost. Um, that all says to me that we're already doing a lot to maintain Reading as a, a value community, just to keep using that phrase. Um, I am, I think, like a lot of community members, probably a lot of community members who aren't here tonight, that I'm not involved in town government. I haven't been. I, you know, I read the papers and I vote and all of those kinds of things. Uh, but I'm not on any boards, uh, so I'm, I'm. Maybe I would describe myself as a passive resident. Um, but I have been able to do that because I feel like the people that are on the boards and the people that are our elected officials and whatnot are doing a good job and maintaining Reddings place in my mind anyway as a value community. So when our elected officials and board members and whatnot are coming to the community saying, we need this, I'm inclined to say, yeah. Um, I also have some involved, my, work, my wife works in our school system, and so I see a little bit of that from the inside. And uh, you know, I agree with what the previous question on the side said. The schools are the bedrock of what brings value to the community and why people value the community. And when I see the performance of our schools over the last 15 years compared to statewide averages, we, I think, punch above our weight. Um, you compare that with what we're paying our teachers, and again, it speaks to value, right? We're, we're not paying our teachers very well, and that's having problems. Um, and But we historically have gotten better results you know, than statewide. So I fully support the override. Um, My fear, if the override did not go through in October, is that once we actually feel the full brunt of the impact, more people will get informed, um, you know, they'll have no choice. And this would come to the table again. So I would see an override eventually going through at some point. Um, my understanding is that with the same amount of money at that point, we would get a lot less. That if you had, let, had to let go of 50 employees, that the cost of rehiring, retraining, um, reinstating programs is going to far surpass what we're looking at here and that they would not get as much. I just want to kind of confirm that. Uh, I'd say that's generally a, an accurate statement. Uh, if we're here a year from now and an override has failed and we're talking all over about it again, I would almost be certain that the number's higher than seven and a half million in order to accomplish the same objective. Uh, so my kids were in school when the last override failed and we had to go back at it again. And so there's some cost, it's financial, it may cost us more, but um, you know, there's a cost that's inside of you, that's in your heart, that's as you watch the teachers struggle, as you watch the kids struggle, and as you know, you never get that year back. We'll come back here, and we'll do the budget again next year, and we'll think about an override next year. But the kids go from kindergarten to first grade, third grade to fourth grade, ninth grade to 10th grade, they graduate. They graduate maybe with not everything they wanted on their transcript. So that's a cost that is really hard to measure. 
and I've been accused of being too passionate about this. And I realize it's because it get, this is like very visceral for me. And I, I've thought about it and I said the only solace that I have, my own children won't actually be affected. You know what, that's a cruddy solace. Because all of your children and the children that I said I would be responsible for, ensuring that they get an absolute best education they can, will be affected. I don't want to see that again. I, really, talk to people who are 50, 52, 53. Talk to the mothers who were home, because at that time only 25% of the kids were in full day kindergarten. 75% were at home, half day. It was mostly mothers. Maybe there were some dads, but it was mostly mothers. We were in the classrooms because the teachers had 30 kids, my son, Nancy Sweeney, 29 kids in the class. There were no paras. There were mothers. There was a schedule, two hours on. We paid for babysitting for other children so that we could volunteer in the classroom. Enjoy this video created by a Reading resident and a Reading Memorial High School student. For more information, visit the Town of Reading website, the Reading Public Schools website, or the Yes for Reading website. Yes for Reading, our town and schools. Vote yes on October 18th.